First, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Asen Agov for presenting the summary of the workshop on strategic energy and transport connectivity. Mr. Agov, Agov the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we had in our panel as speakers Mr. Goran Silanovic, who is Secretary General of the Regional Cooperation Council, uh, which uh, followed the Stability Pact. Mr. Svilanovic was serving as foreign minister in one of the most difficult moments in uh, Serbian history. That was immediately after the uh, Kosovo War. And uh, then he was involved in all these uh, international cooperation activities. Uh, he took note of a statement here at the morning session of the plenary when someone said some of the speakers or some of the people who took the floor in the discussion who said that the conditionality that is set by the European Union for the Western Balkans to join the European Union is not demanded by Russia, China, or other big players uh, on, the, on the scene. And uh, it is true that both Russia and China are investing heavily in Serbia, in uh, Montenegro or Crnogora, as they call it, and uh, in Croatia as well. So, uh, but I don't think that, and he doesn't think, Mr. Svilanovic doesn't think that we should be uh, confronting this. We should be playing together uh, in order to involve, if they want to invest, both the Chinese and the Russians, if they want to, involve, uh, to invest in the Western Balkans, there are four, four points that he stated are important in order to involve them within the framework of our rules and our regulations within the European Union. And he stated that Russian money or Chinese money should be uh, used for the connectivity in our joint projects. He said also that uh, there should be tenders, transparent, open tenders, and for the Russians to compete with European companies as well, as the Chinese should be doing this. Then he stated that uh, they should be involved if they want to invest and not to gain political advantages through their investment. They should be involved in uh, environmental projects, projects that are taking care of the environment so they would play within our policies uh, concerning the environment. And finally, he stated the fourth point, which is setting up joint ventures between local companies, European companies, and, uh, and their companies, of course, under the rules and the regulations of the European Union. That's how he sees the solution to this. Further on, Mr. Svilanovic uh, reminded us of the Trieste Agreement. Uh, it was interesting just to see the reaction uh, in, 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 the, in the hall. Uh, the emphasis was put on creating jobs for young people. It turned out, and he stated, it turned out that young people are really very much, very much desperate to find jobs, frustrated by the present day situation in their countries. An Austrian colleague quoted a young man in Bosnia who said that they're putting the following question. Uh, where, not what, but where is our future? And uh, that's how it, he tried to explain why they're uh, leaving the country. More interesting is that uh, further on within the questions, uh, it turned out that most of the people that would like to leave uh, <coughs> countries in the Western Balkans are uh, people who do have connections in their 40s. They made a special research within the Regional Cooperation Council and it turned out that mostly people in their 40s are trying to leave. That's what, what he stated. Uh, further on, uh, we had as, as a speaker Mr. Zvechu Stankov, who is the Deputy Minister for, uh, for the Energy, he made a very, very concise overview of how uh, energy connectivity is being developed and how Bulgaria is participating in it. He, uh, he reminded us that the 
uh, inter the reverse interconnector with Romania is already functioning, which links uh, Bulgaria and perspective, prospectively the southern gas corridor with, uh, with Central Europe. Then, uh, of course, this was a joint investment with our Romanians, uh, Romanian friends. Then uh, the interconnector with Greece that will link Bulgaria and further, further north, uh, Central Europe, uh, is in an advanced stage. Uh, now the project planning, uh, the tender for the project planning is, uh, is on. And then he mentioned other, other important points which should be uh, reported here. This is the storage of uh, natural gas. There should be more facilities, joint facilities, shared facilities for storage of uh, natural, natural gas. Electricity lines also have to be developed. That's what he, though they are quite, well, quite efficient in, in the area of the Balkans. Uh, further on, we had an interesting discussion on, on uh, the, how this would affect the consumers. Finally, we reached a conclusion, at least we all agreed in the workshop that uh, all this is done not only for strategic reasons, but mostly, mostly to make life easier and, and cheaper for our consumers. Uh, we spoke about Russian and Chinese money, but money was also quite present, because it always comes down to, comes down to money. A colleague from the Bulgarian dele delegation was, uh, was uh, earnest enough to say that the 500 million uh, for uh, leveraged investment from the European Union uh, for the development of the transport connections within the Western Balkans is too few, because it's not enough. And he gave an example. For instance, uh, a small segment of a railway in Bulgaria, which won uh, financing from the European, a grant from the European Union, costs, it's 50 kilometers, and it costs 500 million, a single project. So this is definitely not, not enough. Uh, so, uh, Speaking generally of the prospect for the Western Balkans to be involved in, in the integration process, in the enlargement of the European Union, uh, the most important reason that was stated there in our workshop was that uh, the disappointment and the frustration of the people living in the Western Balkans, not seeing a clear perspective, for, especially for the younger generation, is uh, is not that much the, uh, how the reticence of the European Union to raise the issue up to now, but the dysfunction of their own state systems. So uh, we do see this in Central and Eastern Europe, Europe as well, which the countries there came much, much uh, earlier to the European Union but we still see that a lot of institutions are not functioning in the right way in our countries. So uh, we shouldn't be leaving uh, this problem out of, the out of the spectrum of the issues that we have to, to discuss with our, with our Western Balkan neighbors and friends and hopefully future members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Agov, for your presentation. I would like to give the floor now to Mr. Solomon Pussy present the summary of the workshop EU-China relations. Dr. Pussy, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman, Chair. Chair. Uh, on the EU-China uh, relations, we had uh, an extensive and very vivid discussion on the state of play and prospects for EU-China relations. The presidency conveyed the message that we should spare no efforts to expand cooperation and deepen understanding between EU and China on a rules-based international system of uh, cooperation. Swift conclusion of bilateral agreements on investment, on geographical indicators, and on visa facilitations uh, were mentioned as uh, concrete deliverables. Uh, 
Uh, the member of the European Parliament, uh, Victor Bustinaru from Romania, a uh, member of the Delegation for Relations with China, shared the assessment uh, of the parliamentarians in their latest uh, report on EU-China relations and stressed that EU-China uh, uh, cooperation on global matters should be strengthened, uh, namely within the IMF, G20, United Nations, and uh, uh, on uh, rules-based world, or to uh, strengthen the world's rules-based world order. The flagship initiatives of, uh, of the Union, the Juncker Plan, and uh, of China, the Belt and Road Initiative, were discussed in terms of shared interest to invest infrastructure and connectivity. Pragmatism is the name of the game underlined uh, Bustinaru. Uh, with regard to connectivity, an idea was floated to revive the historically sentimental link between the East and West, the Orient Express, and connected with the recently revived by China Silk Road, using the Hyperloop magical train of Elon Musk in California. Call it Orient Hyperloop Express, to be financed by China, is expected. A uh, few political ideas uh, were tabled uh, during the discussion. One was uh, to the European Union to uh, invest efforts within the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSC, to invite China to join this organization. Uh, creating uh, an A to China Council, uh, we have uh, enough many members of the European Union who are members of NATO, and uh, to create a NATO China Council will be a great, uh, uh, great uh, stimulation for the de developments of the relations between the West and China as a, as a whole. Uh, the European Union may uh, uh, invest in the democratization of uh, North Korea in cooperation in, in China and to launch uh, a Helsinki process uh, initiative. Those uh, who remember uh, the times before the end of the, uh, before the fall of the Berlin Wall know very well what does the, the Helsinki process mean. Arctic countries uh, uh, shared concern about the future developments around the North Pole and ex an expectation was shared that uh, Russia, might, uh, Russia might claim the North Pole. Uh, human rights. In China, uh, it was uh, more or less agreed that there are two ways to approach the human rights. One is the productive and another is counterproductive. And we much better use the, the productive way in approaching the human rights uh, in China. Moreover, Ch China could be our ally in uh, the democratization of uh, uh, North Korea. EU and China are together on the Paris Agreement and on the climate change, and we hope the uh, United States to return together with us. This, uh, in rough outlines, uh, is uh, the summary of the discussion. Thank you so much, Mr. Passy. Due to travel arrangements of the speakers at the Danube Strategy Workshop, they are not available to present the summary of the debates. Therefore, the information for that and all the other workshops will, will be made available on the website of the Parliamentary Dimension of the Bulgarian Presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, we now continue with session three.